I'm an artist. My name is Leonard Kozianski. Welcome to my studio. This is where I work. This is where I paint my pictures. I'd like to talk to you about a painting that I did several years ago called Her Morning Run. Also, at the end of this video, we'll have a little art quiz for those of you who are art buffs. This painting uh, represents part of my life. When wondering what to paint, I thought, well, why not just paint what you do, paint your life, paint, paint who you are. And every morning, I start off every day with a run, with a four or five mile run through suburban Annapolis. You know, this is how I start my day. And it, it starts off usually very early when the stars are out and it's still dark. And then it finishes when the sun has risen and it's full daylight. And it's a narrative painting in that it represents a, a passage of time. And this painting took me about three months to paint. It's very detailed. A lot of leaves, a lot of blades of grass. And oh this is my oh running my uh, These are the guys I run with. And I've been running with those guys forever. And you know, here I am in my studio beginning my painting the way I begin all my paintings with a, a drawing in my sketchbook wasn't a very interesting composition, but I like the idea of all those houses and trees and, you know, so sort of going from dark to light. And I did another drawing, which I liked a lot better. It was more complex. Uh, there was a road. Uh, there was a body of water in the distance. There was that church in the middle ground. And, and there's that runner in the foreground. And then there's someone looking at them from the window. So here I drew a grid, a pencil grid, over the drawing, and that, and then I also drew a grid on the, the surface of the canvas, and this allowed me to, to enlarge the drawing. And I'm not a slave to my grid, uh, but it's a really nice guide. It helps me to, you know, figure out the relationship between things and the scale of things as I go from the sketch to a larger image. And this is the finished painting, her morning run. As I said, a surrealist painting in that it, it represents the visual appearance of things as well as my emotional reaction to them, done from my imagination. I'm not using photographs. And it's a narrative going from nighttime in the distance to broad daylight in the foreground. And this is the fore, this is a detail of the foreground. And there's the runner, and there's a bird flying, so it's daylight. There's a dog on the lawn watching the runner. There's that figure in the window over there on the right. Some of that mysterious figure. And that person is in a room that's illuminated with artificial light. So it's almost like they're still in that nighttime time of day. And they're looking up. There's sort of a dark silhouette against the lighted background. And they seem older. Are they watching that runner? Are they envious of that runner? You know, it's, it's sort of like a perplexing element. It adds a sort of a disquieting note to this, you know, otherwise energetic runner image because she's obviously very energetic in her running. So when I'm doing the uh, the, the road that the, 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 she's running on and the, and the houses, the, the paths, uh, the walkways from the houses, what I do is I underpaint them with little blobs of white paint. Then I glaze thin layers of actual color over the top of that white. And so I'm using textured paint to represent a texture. And that, that's kind of a surrealist technique as well, using the paint to represent uh, something, a texture in real life. Here is a detail of the middle ground. When we're running through a, a suburban neighborhood, the houses really do kind of look alike. And, you know, suburbia is a, a very conformist kind of culture. And these houses, they're, they're all almost identical. And it's kind of a very, a very cohesive society because it's a very conformist society. And in the center of it is that church. And when we drive around suburbia, we can see that there are lots of churches because religion is central to the culture. If not to the individual's life, it certainly is central to the culture. But here... In this, in this detail of the middle ground, uh, we can see that uh, space is being created by 
having things get smaller as they get farther away. Also, the colors shift from sort of very dark colors to brighter and more contrasty colors in the foreground. The red roofs and the facade of the church and the facade of the facade of the illuminated house are also done with a glaze technique, with an underpainting. And here we can see in this close-up of that church that I've used a, a sort of like a real bricky kind of brush stroke with white paint. And then when the white paint was dry, then I glazed that sort of gray-green over the top of it. Also with the stained glass windows, I painted those with a very flat white. And then that, when that was dry, then I glazed the, the stained glass colors over the top of it, giving it a kind of a, a stained glass appearance. And then once the uh, I've applied the glaze to that underpainting, then I rub, I can rub it with my hand or with a rag, and that helps bring out the texture. And so, you know, here's the middle ground where I've used the glaze technique and, you know, all the houses are alike and, you know, it's very representative of suburbia. And then here's the distance. And it's nighttime. The moon is rising. The, uh, everything is dark. That body of water. Look at those boats that are in that little cove over there on the right. Notice that they, they have these little white lights on at the top of their masts. Those are anchor lights. Also notice that big oar boat over there on the left. But here, you know, in that distance, it's very dark. Notice that there's that car over there in the distance on the right with its headlights on. So it's very much nighttime over there in the deep distance. And then as we get closer to the foreground, it becomes more illuminated. It becomes more like daytime, which is very much like how my run is where I start off and it's very much nighttime. And then by the time I finish, the sun's up and it's full daylight. So this is the finished painting, her morning run, 42 inches high by 26 inches wide. I had to let it dry. I varnished it. I varnished all my paintings. I never let a painting leave my studio unprotected because you never know what's going to happen to your paintings. And then I frame it to protect the edges. And then I sent it to one of my favorite galleries, the, the J. Willott Gallery out in California, and they exhibited it and they sold it. Uh, and so now that painting is enriching the lives of other people. So how about that art quiz? Well, here is the subject of our art quiz. It's a portrait by Hans Holbein, painted in 1533. It's called The Ambassadors. And here we have two men. It's a, a double portrait, a portrait of two men who are obviously very successful. They're ambassadors. In fact, the man over there on the left is a bishop. Notice how lavish his dress is. These are obviously successful men, powerful men, and that still life behind them, very detailed, very precisely painted still life of scientific instruments, navigation instruments, musical instruments. These, in addition to being very wealthy, very powerful and successful men, these are very well-educated men. And that was a major status symbol at the time, to be well-educated, to be interested in science and navigation and music. But what is that shape down there at the bottom of the picture, that diagonal shape? That's the subject of our quiz. What does that represent? We have five seconds to figure that out. One, two, three... Four, five. Well, if we look at the painting from a real sharp angle, we can see that that represents a skull. So why put a skull in the picture? Or if we uh, look at that through a glass rod, we can see that it's a skull. That's a very disconcerting element. It's sort of a very upsetting element in this portrait of success and prosperity. Well, what Holbein's doing, this is an example of what's known as anamorphism. And it's uh, artists using optical illusions and planting hidden messages inside paintings. And the hidden message inside this painting is called a memento mori. 
and it's a reminder that we all someday will die. And it's a reminder to these very successful men and to those people who are viewing this portrait of these successful and prosperous men that we all must die, no matter how successful and prosperous we become. Well, thank you for watching this video and participating in my art quiz. And if you wouldn't mind, if, you're, if you haven't subscribed, please do, or leave a comment. That really helps. It helps me to make more of these videos. But thank you for watching. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, like, and share. And don't forget to ring the bell.